Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the most important recording projects ever. And, you know, among all the usual culprits, there are some things that I think are just musically really significant and that we need to have them in our collections if we're hardcore collectors. And this is one of those. You're not going to listen to all of it at once or ever, but you should have it. No, seriously, it is the Paganini Complete Edition on Dynamic. Yeah, whoever thinks about Paganini the composer, everyone knows the name. Everyone knows him because he wrote the tune. You know, the tune, the last of his 24 caprices that every violinist plays and which I really can't stand to listen to because solo violin music makes me crazy most of the time, however brilliant it may be. So, you know, you don't even have to like it. You need it. You need it. Why do we need the complete works of Paganini? Well, they actually say quite a bit. It's really a fascinating legacy. It really is remarkable. It's mostly chamber music, uh, you know, and it's I like zillions of chamber music thingies. And what's really fascinating is that you realize that uh, he actually wrote more music for guitar than he did for violin, or at least as much for one as for the other. He was a splendid guitarist. He was supposed to have been as amazing a guitarist as he was a violinist. The guitar uh, fascinated him. And really, it's a very interesting instrument because it's quite similar to the violin in that it's a fretted, I mean, the guitar is a fretted instrument. The violin is not, but it's played the same way. I mean, the violin use a bow, the guitar use your fingers, they have a different number of strings. I know, I get it. But the concept, a stringed instrument with a fingerboard, and you diddle the fingerboard to get different notes, and you whack the strings, voila! They are quite similar. They're even similar sort of shape, you know? They look like that, you know, that sort of shape. So, yeah, I mean, that's very interesting. If you like classical guitar, you cannot live without Paganini, but he is generally neglected by everybody. Absolutely everybody, and this complete edition has 40 discs. 40 discs. Oh my God, that's a lot of Paganini. Now, some of the things, they have some historical recordings and things in here, but still, 35 discs. And really, just a tremendous, tremendous amount of stuff. But why else is this important? It's important musically because the 19th century was the era of the great virtuoso explosion you know the modern technique of playing all of these these instruments was was established and stabilized first in the piano universe by Liszt and in the violin universe by Paganini but whereas Liszt has always had his following not a complete edition until you know Hyperion got around to doing it um, but he was quasi-respected. He was respected as the father-in-law of Wagner, as a musical revolutionary, for all kinds of reasons, as a Hungarian national. I mean, Liszt had his toes into many of the major 19th century trends. And Liszt's technique, his technique of transcendental virtuosity, was based and inspired by his, his encounters with Paganini. It was Paganini who got Liszt on the path that made him the virtuoso that he eventually became. And yet, Paganini wrote scads and scads of music that nobody pays attention to. The problem with Paganini, of course, is that he was Italian. And, you know, Liszt allied himself with the new German school. And it was the German school that became the, the, the avatar of first of all, musicology in the 19th century. They invented it as a study. And second of all, that sort of concept of German music, the German school, that nationalist school, um, which the German musicologists promoted, became the orthodoxy of the entire world of Western music. And as a result of that, one of the absolute tenets of German musicology in the 19th century was to shit on the Italians. <laughs> That's what they did, because Italy was, of course, the land of mindless, mindless singers. Those those singer people, they were idiots, and 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 the music was was popular, and it had no aspirations to higher things. 
and it wasn't contrapuntally erudite and you couldn't analyze it in terms of harmonic process like you could German instrumental music. You just couldn't do it that way. Italian composers, however much they pushed the envelope, and they did in their way, in their medium, um, they were basically resented. Their popularity was resented because even in the German speaking lands, you know, the highest and best form of music was opera. And the great composers of opera were Italian, and the great singers were Italian, and they were performing all over the place, even as late as Strauss's. Strauss's Capriccio in the 1940s, where he's making fun of the Italians. He has to, they're always drunk, and they're always, you know, he, he has a thoroughly German view of Italians and Italian music and Italian performers. It's really, it's really fascinating to actually follow the, the, the evolution of, you know, this particular view of Italian music. And, and most people thought that way. I mean, Bernard Shaw, if you read his criticism, he's always dogging the Italians, even though he likes a lot of the music. I mean, he loves Verdi's greatest operas. He really did. But, you know, next to Wagner, oh, God, no, they were just, they were just sort of, you know, kindergarten stuff. And that really is a terrible attitude, and it's an incorrect attitude on top of it. It comes from an unwillingness, a refusal to understand what these composers were doing. So Paganini, I'm not going to make the argument that this guy was a great composer. He was a great composer for the violin. He was a great composer for the guitar. And he just wrote scads and scads of music for both. And the fact of the matter is that his, his style was in, totally imbued with Rossini and the Italian classicism and notion of Italian bel canto. Um, he didn't flirt with the demonic in quite the same way Liszt did, you know. He wasn't interested in crazy harmonic innovations, although there's some wonderful works in here. And we'll talk about a couple of them. I'll tell you what they are. But he was important. He was a tremendously, he was a force. He was, he was one of the the, 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 the moving forces of instrumental technique and, and, and legend and mythos in the, in the 19th century. In his way, he was a, a greater virtuoso than, than Liszt was because the violin is a much more difficult instrument to project those kinds of, of images through than the piano is. And the piano is like an orchestra. You've got 10 fingers and you bang along and you know, it works perfectly well by itself. The violin, you know, you need, you need help sometimes. And, and Paganini also didn't help his own cause because he didn't publish his music because he reserved it for himself. Like most virtuosi, he was interested in keeping his secrets close to his vest. And so people didn't know a lot of his music and he didn't perform a lot of it because there's a lot of it here. So anyway, here we have a very fine edition on the dynamic label, 40 CDs. Um, containing all of Paganini's works. And that's an amazing achievement, discographically. I, you know, I, it, it, it's funny how our, our view of history is so skewed, and our view of what matters is so skewed. I mean, yeah, a lot of these pieces are tiny here. I'll show you what I mean. Let's, let's, let's stop being theoretical. Um, I'm going to just look at the booklet here because the, the discs are all very nicely packaged in this in this, you know, these nice slip cases that aren't glued shut, so you can actually get them out without gunking up everything. So we start with, we start with the works for violin and orchestra. There are six violin concertos. They needed a lot of work and reconstructing and whatnot to make them all playable and put them all together, because as I said, Paganini only, only reserved them for himself. Um, so here they are, and they're played on Paganini's violin. Yay, and they're played by who's this Mario Mario Hassan, who's a very fine violinist, actually. Um, he really plays excellently. And let's see who else do we have here? Massimo Quarta is soloist and conductor in some of these pieces. Um, you can actually get the violin concertos separately. And these are original scores of the violin concerti. They're not the reorchestrations that we're used to some of them which have extra percussion and stuff like that. And actually, they sound lovely in the chamber orchestra version. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's Massimo Quarta doing the concertos, Mario Hassan doing a lot of the other works for violin and orchestra, including La Strega, The Witches, and the Suona Suonata con Variazione, 
and non più mesta. You know that? That's the concluding rondo from R Rossini's La Cenerentola. Uh, and i palpiti, tanti palpiti from Tancredi. You know, they're operatic things. And religiosa introduzione al rondo del campanello, the religious introduction to the rondo of the bells. I mean, these are fun pieces. They're lovely. And there's, there's quite a few of them. Cats. Oh, my God. They're kittens. They're only six months old. And they are insane. And we've got a whole bunch of, you know, sonatas and things. And the Balletto Campestra, the countryside. And the Carnival of Venice. Um, and these are all played. These are with Salvatore Accardo at the Chamber Orchestra of Europe. Licensed by EMI, from EMI. Some of the things in here were licensed. I mean, anything that they could do to make a beautiful, complete edition, they did. Um, and really, this is fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, some of these works for violin and orchestra that you don't know. It's like Liszt's non-concerto works for violin and orchestra. You know, all these short pieces that never get played. Then we have just plain works with orchestra. We have his Tarantella, MS-76. That's helpful, isn't it? And Le Couvent de Mont Saint Bernard for violin, male chorus, and orchestra. A 21 minute cantata thing. It ends, by the way, with the Rondo del Campanello. The bell thing comes back. And then we have Niccolo Paganini, uh, Mr. Henry for horn, bassoon, and orchestra. And the Sonata per la Grande Viola. And these are all which is works with orchestra. They're really kind of cool that you'll never have heard of. And they're fun to listen to. They're just enjoyable and tuneful. And they're not formally inept, not at all. You know, I mean, we exaggerate just how complicated musical form has to be. It can be very complicated, but it can work very well in a more rational and simple way. Then we've got chamber works, quartets for strings and guitar. And there are a lot of these suckers. I mean, does it tell us how many there are? It's 30, 14, 15, 16 quartets for guitar and strings. And let's see. Dedicated to amateur ladies, some of these things, but they're not short works. 25 minutes long. I mean, they're, they're big pieces. Uh, 15. Uh, okay. So there's about, let's see, I think 15 of them. And they're, they're major pieces. Major three and four movement works um, lasting anywhere from 20 minutes to about 25, 26 minutes you know, as long as any string quartets or whatever of the period. And they're beautifully written, beautifully, beautifully written. The greatest works for strings and guitar since Boccherini's quintets. And they're really, really lovely. And then we've got trios for strings and guitar. There's a bunch of those suckers. Um, and then we have, let's see, string quartets, of which there are three, three regular, normal string quartets. They're not the most sophisticated string quartets in the world. We're not talking about Beethoven here. But if you like the Donizetti string quartets and whatnot, you're going to like these. They're tuneful and they're beautifully written. And then we've got other chamber works. Let's see, pieces for string trio, duets for violin and cello. Oh, this lovely work. This is fun. The Divertimento Carnivaleschi for two violins and cello, which is a half hour of little tiny delicious sniglets, dances, fun little pieces. You've got three duets for violin and bassoon. I mean, they're 16, 17 minutes long. These are not negligible pieces. And then we've got four nocturni, a quartetto. These are, these are actual string quartets, um, except a couple of them have, there's a, there's a mandolin, it's a sonata for mandolin and guitar, a serenata for mandolin and guitar, a minuet for the mandolin. Really, like, cool stuff, right? Then we've got works for violin and guitar. This is an incredible fund of material. Now, most of these are short pieces in a couple of movements lasting anywhere from four to 10 minutes or so, although there's one here I'm looking at, it's 14 minutes, and mostly two movements um, in variable tempos with variable sectional sort of things. And there are, let's see, sonatas, well, there's a series of sonatas in groups of, of six as you know, things used to be done back in the day. Um, I, I don't even know how many there are. All I'm going to say is that they, they run from, let's see here. They, they tell us. Yeah, it's on the back here. It's CD. Oh. Here we go. 
works for violin Kadar CD 18 to CD 26, um, which is quite a thing. And then works for solo violin are only CDs 27 and 28, but works for solo guitar are CDs 29 through 32. So there's much more guitar music. And I'm not even a fan of guitar music, but in the context of this entire collection, I really enjoy this stuff. So let's see, what have we got here? Works for violin and guitar. Yes, there's, these are also sonatas. Also, there's a fabulous set. Oh, this is a fabulous thing here. First of all, there's a sonata concertata for violin and guitar, which is a 14 minute long extravaganza. And then variations on Barucaba. The variations on Barucaba come in three groups. They're big chunks of variations, 42 minutes long, 60 variations. It's quite, quite a piece. Um, so, I, you know, there's, there's fun stuff. Then the solo violin stuff, of course, we have the Capriccios. And here, the performer here is, is Leonidas Cavacos, who's a very, very fine violinist. He knows how to capriche with the best of them. Um, then we've got the solo violin sonata, which is 21 minutes long. I mean, you know, people are doing the Isai sonatas and the Bach solo things. and No one's doing Paganini besides the Caprices, which is just a pain. Then we've got all these works for solo guitar. You've got lots and lots of little two-minute tiny sonatas. There's like slews of those, 37 of them actually, 37 guitar sonatas um, that are oh, so blissfully short. I love it. They don't overstay their welcome. They're tiny and charming. But then you get, then you get the, the Giribizzi. Giribizzi are, are sniglets, little, little jeu d'esprit. We've reviewed those on classicstoday.com. You can go and have a look at them. I adore the Giribizzi. I mean, they're just little pieces anywhere from less than a minute. There's what, 23 seconds to two minutes and a bit. Um, they're based, some of them, on other tunes. There's the witches, La Strege shows up in here, and La Cidarem, La Mano, that shows up in here, and all kinds of other things. There's a, a Dagietto con Espressione by Rossini Paganini. It's, they're delightful, just delightful. And it's an hour of, hour's worth of 43 separate pieces. Um, and they're charming. Guitarists know them. And it's one of the pieces. And then we've got rare and newly discovered works. Six more sonatinas for violin and guitar. Um, we have the Sonata a Preghiera, the premiere recording with the rediscovered introduction version for violin and piano. And we've got, let's see, preludes for solo violin and the Grand Concerto in E minor. This is the original version for violin and guitar, which is kind of cool. And there's some other things here. Then we have th disc 36. We have Ruggiero Ricci plays Paganini. They licensed some of his Vox recordings, including the Caprices, as he was a great Paganinist, Paganinioso, and Salvatore Accardo, the other great Paganini violinist who did a beautiful set of the concertos on Deutsche Grammophon. Um, with all kinds of things, we've got he does he does the 60 variations on the Barucaba theme as well, um, and the second violin concerto, and you've got Ricci doing uh, more Paganini, the fourth violin concerto, and the first violin concerto. I'm just sort of going through this stuff. And then CDs 39 and 40 are a tribute to Paganini. And this is piano music by Marco Pazzini, um, by everybody, by, by Hummel, Moschelis, Kulau, Liszt, Dalla Piccola, Busoni, Schumann, and he Henry Hertz, Johann Strauss, and Brahms all writing pianistic tribu tributes to Paganini based either on the Caprices or on, you know, the two, I mean, the tune, the big tune. So, I mean, the Ludoslavsky two piano version of the Paganini variations isn't on here, but you get just about everything else. So, uh, in sum, uh, this is a major, major, major set by, uh, devoted to one of the most important musicians, maybe not necessarily composer, but musicians of the, of the 19th century, and he was, a composer of considerable import. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.